so did I, because when I am up here, when I get these messages from the Lord, I'm ministering to me as much as I'm ministering to you. And that's the way it should be. We should all hear the voice of the Lord, amen? Let me pray. Heavenly Father, it is your word that I bring forth this day by your grace, by your grace. And Heavenly Father, I ask that none of my words would fall to the ground, but they would accomplish that which you set them forth to accomplish. Here in this auditorium and via social media, whichever we're on, Lord, you know everyone. I speak, decree, and declare that the words that I speak will bring healing, restoration, encouragement to this body and those listening. And Father, I give you praise now. Your word is blessed. Your word is anointed. And now I ask for that anointing to come through me in Jesus' name. And God's people said, Amen. Amen. Let's turn in our Bibles again to Proverbs, the fourth chapter. And the title of my message today is simply this. When you are weak, God is strong. How many of you have to hear that today? Just one. Thank you very much for your amen. Anyone else that needs to hear that message? Amen. Amen. So when we are weak, God is strong. Reading from Proverbs 4, verses 25 and 27 again. Let your eyes look directly ahead. Let them look towards the path of moral courage. And let your gaze be fixed straight in front of you toward the path of integrity. And verse 26, consider well and watch carefully the path of your feet and all your ways will be steadfast and sure. Verse 27, do not turn away to the right nor to the left where evil may lurk. Turn your foot from the path of evil. Turn your foot from the path of evil. You see, something is going to be required of us. Can anyone say amen? Amen. We need to make decisions. We need to, as I have shared last time, talking about courage. We need to have the courage to follow through on our convictions. You know, we can talk about, I'm convicted with this and I'm convicted with that. Well, when are we going to do something about it? God doesn't condemn us. He convicts us. And you as a Christian and I as a Christian, we know the difference. You just don't have peace till you do, till you do what you're supposed to do and say yes. Amen. It's just that niggling, niggling, niggling. I said this last time, without courage, and it's a strong statement, but it's true. Without courage, you're really not living. You're hiding. I'm going to talk about somebody that was hiding today. Courage is what moves you forward. Courage is the muscle that makes your faith work. That's what makes you continue on when it would seem like all hell just broke loose. Anybody here? We've all been through it. As the shepherd of this house, under the anointing of the great shepherd, I pretty well know the sheep. And I know the tragedies that many of us have came through just in this short time of this year, 2022. 
It hasn't been an easy time. But that's why I'm saying today, I'm ministering to me and you, you and I, I should say, proper English. And I'm saying it plain. When you are weak, he is strong. He is strong. Last time I I read to you in Hebrews 1 about Gideon and Barak and Samson and David and Samuel and on and on the list goes. But all of these men went before us with courage. And the Bible tells us an amazing scripture, out of weakness, they were made strong. Out of weakness, they were made strong. How many of you have said that in your lifetime? If it doesn't kill me, it'll strengthen me. Well, it's Bible, hallelujah. Out of weakness, they were made strong. So the question is, will you and I make the changes that we have to make? Will we allow God's strength in us to overcome our weakness? Will we allow the Lord to be able to say to us, keep going, child, you're doing just fine. Put one foot in front of the other if it comes down to that. One day at a time if it comes down to that. One hour at a time if it comes down to that right down to one minute at a time if it comes down to that. Has anyone ever felt like you're holding on by the, 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 you're just holding on by the skin of your teeth? But God says, I'm there. I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. In Judges 6, verses 15 and 16, the Bible says, I said unto him, this of course is Gideon, I am the least in my father's house. And the Lord said unto him, don't give me your pity. That's not what it says, does it? If you're, well, you're not reading it because I'm reading it from here. Because I, I could just see some of your expressions. What? We're not gonna have a pity party here. You're gonna hear me. And do you know what the Lord answered him? Surely, not if you're good enough. Not if you keep all the rules and regulations. Not if you do everything you're told to do. No, there was nothing else but what God wanted him to hear. Surely, I will be with you. If we never hear another thing, I could close these notes and we had church. Because we need to understand, beloved, And those of you listening to me by social media, we need to understand that just as surely as God was with all these men of the faith that I've just said, talked to you about, and and Gideon and all of the rest of them, surely I was with you. And surely if he was with them, surely he will be with the church of the living God that's blood was shed for us. Surely. Jesus himself said, I will never leave you. That means never. 10 times underscored and 15 exclamation marks. Never, never. He's with you at all times. And when we see the life of Gideon here, we see something. God's always had a strategy. He's always had a strategy a strategy. Stop telling God about the problem and start telling the problem about God. Hallelujah. For every battle, God's always had a strategy. Stop praying about the problem and start praying for a strategy. The vision will always be greater than the one who is called to fulfill it. I'm going to say that again. Somebody in this house or somebody listening to me by social media needs to hear that word. Stop. 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 
Stop praying about the problem. Start asking for a strategy. The vision, hear me well, the vision will always be greater than the one who is called to fulfill it. Somebody needs to hear that. Psalm 127, one. Hallelujah. David said, except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. Jesus, beloved, was a carpenter. He knew the weight load you can handle. He knew the materials that were required and how it will all fit together in your life and in my life. Oh, hallelujah. Could it be, no, could it be that he's already been speaking to your head for months? Has he been revealing his plan to you, but you've been too afraid to act on it? Hmm. Stop collecting opinions. Get alone with him. Shut the door. Wait in his presence until you receive a clear word. Remember, if God gives you the blueprints, then you're about to go under construction. Now listen, that means getting hammered and nailed. Mm, I don't like this message, Pastor. Well, too bad because this is what I've got. It's not enough to be called. You have to be equipped. But don't be discouraged. The God who designed every colour and stone in the high priest garments has already designed every detail of your future. Just step out and follow him. You'll build it. You're designed to handle the pressure. The one who said to give in, surely I will be with you, is the same one that's saying that to you today. Same one that's saying that today. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Father. And when you are weak, he will be strong. Yes, he will. And now we read in Judges 6, 12. The Lord is with thee, thou mighty man of valour. You talk about calling things that be not as though they were. He was the furthest thing from a man of valour that any human being could look at. If you've been under attack, and most of us have, if we're honest about it, God is about to do something. Get ready. Get ready. What the fight is all about. He knows. He knows what the fight's all about. <laughs> Listen carefully. Nobody brings heavy equipment to build a chicken coop. The level of warfare over your life, and I'm not just talking about ministry here. I'm talking about God's call on your life. Whatever it is, it might never be a part in a ministry as far as an official Official, this is, you know, you're, you're an evangelist or you're a pastor or you're a teacher or you're a prophet. I'm not talking about just that. I'm talking about your life. The enemy would like to cut your life short. He doesn't want you to fulfill. He wouldn't even want you to, to build a chicken coop. But God knows he's got a lot bigger things for you. He's got a lot bigger things for you. Sometimes the devil is more aware of who we are than we are. Gideon was hiding in a cave, yet God called him. Oh, 
mighty man of valor, get out of there. How many of you in here today and listening to me over the airwaves, you're just feeling your heart just pounding because God's been saying that to you. Get out of that slump. Get out of that depression. Get out of that I can't, I can't, I can't. And get into, by your grace, I will, I will, I will. Yes. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. Somewhere in your life, somewhere in my life, we should have a vision, a vision from God that humanly speaking makes absolutely no sense. Hallelujah. Doesn't make any sense whatsoever. And that is the truth that says it all. That's the way your life should be. And I'm not, as I said, I repeat myself. It could be a business proposition. It could be a, a, a vision for, for to be a millionaire. It could be a vision to be anything, a doctor, a nurse, whatever your vision is. Perhaps you're looking at it today and saying, this is an impossible task. No, it's not. For you it is, but not for the strength of God in you when you're weak. If he calls you to it, he'll see you through it. Oh, hallelujah. So somewhere, humanly speaking, it just doesn't make sense. There's no way I could do this. Do you know how many years ago I said that to God? God, you've got the wrong person here. You want me to start a church? Come on. I left school at 15 years old, equivalent to a high school diploma. And believe me, I know what it is to be humbled before God. Trust me, today, God has great things for your future. He said he would take the foolish things to confound the wise and you're looking at her. And I can say that, I don't care who you, I, I just say it the way it is. I'm not trying to make points with anyone but God. I just want to please God. I'm telling you the truth when I say what I say. This would have been the last thing that I would ever have thought I would ever be doing, especially at my time of life now. Hello? But God strengthens me. It's not me. Many, many times I'm tired. I'm weary. The burden gets heavy. And then I have to remind myself about what the Word says and what I teach you. His burden is light. His burden is even take, take my yoke upon you. Many times we keep that yoke in us like the oxen and we keep going and keep, and God's saying, why don't you just give it to me? Oh, glory. Well, I'm preaching better than your amen and I can tell you, I'm teasing you. So praise God. It, when you get this from God, when you finally say, Lord, is this what you've been telling me? The way, this is the road my life's supposed to take? It will take you beyond your own ability because he's not looking for your ability. He's looking for your availability. And he will make you realize that it's not by might, it's not by power, but it's by my spirit, saith the Lord. Zechariah 4, 6. Stop asking people who they think you are. Ask God, and when He defines you, what difference does it make who thinks whatever? When God's on your side, you've nothing to fear. I learned that growing up as a child this high. Because of a cross above the door, that you would walk into my home and my dad would point to that cross in many conversations and say, as long as there's a cross above the door, you have nothing to fear. He wasn't a man to preach the scriptures. He didn't know the scriptures that I know of. 
but he knew he's God. In his own way, he called his God his maker. I'll stand before my maker someday and I'll give an account then. Meantime, I'll try to be the best husband, the best father, the best employee that I can be. That's how he talked. And he knew nothing about positive confession. He just knew how to be truthful. Oh, hello. Wow, hallelujah. Hallelujah. So it's not by my You can't do this on your own. Ask God. Oh, thank you. You might say, as Gideon, oh God, I don't have what it takes. And God says back to you and I, good. That's just what I'm looking for. You fit the bill, come on in. You fit the bill. God wants to raise people he can trust with success. People who can remember what they were when he found them. Not celebrities, but channels who refuse to touch the glory. He doesn't need anything you know or anything you've polished or anything you're proud of. He uses the foolish things. So you and I, are both qualified. All you need to hear from God is go get into his presence and say, God, what pastor's saying is me, I am weak. And I need you to be my strength. We need to always remember the rock from whence we were hewn. We need to always walk in humility before our God, because without Him, we are nothing. We don't breathe without Him. I had the opportunity last night to speak to someone that I haven't spoken personally to in, oh, it's a long, I couldn't even tell you how many months, years. I mean, one-on-one personal. But God just did this, and it was just a supernatural thing. I thought I was blessing them, and they turned out to be blessing me. And it was someone that belongs to this church and they've been with me since way back, Oliver Street. And that's what we talked about for a few moments. And some of you here have never heard these stories. Time to start bringing them back again because we didn't always have this beautiful, magnificent auditorium with whatever 17, 20, 25, I don't even know how many acres of land. But I'm gonna tell you how we got there. And then this conversation went on to say, do you remember, Pastor, the freezer in Oliver Street? And it took my mind back. I said, oh yeah, right, my prayer closet. (laughs) Because it used to be a meat market. And in this prayer closet was hanging all this meat with blood dripping out of it. And this person, she she explained, it reminded me that she was one of the ones that would scrub down the walls and take the dry blood off the walls. Hello? Hello? Really? I said, my God, I'd forgotten all about that. I said, but one thing I'll never forget in that prayer closet, because I was actually in a fridge, there was nothing colder in, all the equipment was turned off. But I, w- <laughs> I used to go in there and pray and intercede. And I would get so loud, you know. And there was an apartment behind it. And in the apartment was a cat. <laughs> and the cat always wanted to join me. And I kid you not, and I told them this last night, I said, I'm telling you the truth, that I do remember. And the louder I got, this cat, I'd knock on the walls and it would get, so finally I gave up. Finally I gave up. I said, you can pray over there and I'll pray in here. But the conversation ministered to me 
This is what I'm trying to get across to you. Do not despise the day of small beginnings. And I look here today, and no, we're not running hundreds and hundreds of people. That'll come. God's timing's perfect. And I'll preach to 10 the way I preach to 1,000. I've done it before. I've done it in Africa. I've done it in different places of the world, and I'll do it again. That's not the issue. But when I thought about those early days and what it cost us, it was complete, absolute commitment to God. And we were like children playing in the traffic, and I was the big sister. What did we know back then? We grew together as a church family. We grew in the Word. We grew by making mistakes through failures, through missing God. You know what? He always knew where to find us. We could go as far to the highest mountain in the deepest valley. God's still going to find us. He's still going to find us. But we need to keep that heart always fresh. Never, never look what we have achieved. We have achieved nothing. It's God that built this house. And God is going to keep it alive. I'm excited about the next generation that God is raising up in this house. Hallelujah. Just believe, believe that he's saying to you today, when you are weak, I am strong. I'm strong. I'm strong. Glory to God. So, The question remains, who's clearing the way? I'm going to read you something that's very interesting. In 2 Kings 2.6, Elijah tells his friend Elisha, and I quote, Stay here, Elisha. The Lord has sent me to the Jordan. Now listen to the story behind this. In the background behind Elijah were 50 men watching in the distance at what looked like impossible. It appeared there was nowhere for Elijah to go. This huge river was blocking him from getting across. Question, beloved, what's your river today? What's stopping you from getting across? But Elijah knew what God had called him to do. And again, you can put anything in there. The best father, the best mother, the best business person, the best employee, employer. You can put anything in there. Whatever he's telling you, do the best you can do. And don't give up. And don't quit without giving some notice. I just got that in there because that used to be the way things were done. You didn't walk off. You gave notice to that employer. You did the right thing. Maybe somebody's thinking of quitting this week. Well, give notice because that was not in my notes. Hallelujah. So we see here that Elijah knew And he trusted God and he would come through to the end. He knew this about his God. As long as Elijah did what he was asked of him, God could have sent him a boat. He could have even made Elijah swim across. But God wanted to show the others this was his plan. You see, There are certain times in life, beloved, you'll be able to do nothing because God's going to stop, step back and say, this is my place now. You just get to the side. You just get over there. I've been hearing that. I've been hearing that. 
I'm not talking about me physically, just everything, you know, spirit, soul, and body. Rest and just get over there. You just sit down there and let me do some stuff here. Is anybody here? You're real quiet. But this is truth. And I'm sure many of you have heard that voice. Time to sit down for a few minutes. Come on. Come on. We try to do more in one day than generations before has never did us in weeks. And we talk about it being in new technology. New technology tires you out. You know, when you work with your mind, constantly working with your mind is more tiring than digging for coal. That's a quote from my father, because my father worked with his mind, and he used to say that all the time. And this is where we are with our new technology and all this stuff, and I'm not against any of it. Let's go for this. Come on, we're in a new day. Let's all go the new way. I got it. But there has to be a balance where God still is God. I'm going to say that again, where God still is God. And guess what, beloved? God still has the final, the final word. I know the plans and the thoughts I have for you, he says in his word. Plans to do you good and not evil in your final outcome. Whoa. So... God could have did all these things, but notice Elijah didn't have to persuade the people around him. Let that sink in. He didn't have to persuade them that God had given him a plan. No, he was way beyond that in his life. He didn't have to plead with others to believe in his new set out journey. No. He wasn't, he wasn't on his own mission. That's what brings you the peace, beloved. Oh, if you never hear another thing, please hear that. That was the Holy Ghost. He was not on his own mission. He was on God's mission. And if God guides, God provides. That's why any of you that have been here for any amount of time in this church, you know from day one you've never heard this pastor ever beg for money. I never will. Because unless God guides, I'm I'm spinning my wheels. He'll provide. Are you hearing what I'm saying? He knew. So standing at the river's edge, Elijah took his cloak He rolled it up and he struck the water with it. He meant business. And suddenly, the water divided to the left and to the right. It was evidence that God was in fact leading Elijah. Elijah then marched towards and crossed right over the middle of the Jordan. The simple lesson here, beloved, for all of us is where God guides, and I'm saying it again, God provides. So what? Sacrifice. What sacrifice do we think we can make? Jesus Christ paid the price. The sacrifice of Calvary. All God's asking for us, from us, the church of the living God, is when he does speak to us to obey because obedience is better than sacrifice. Oh, hallelujah. God will not put roadblocks in the path of one who is trying to do his will. And if you wonder if God is leading you in a direction, look around. If he is, the doors will open. It might take a wee while. It's called patience. But if it's truly God, beloved, you will not have to knock down doors. If it's truly God. For him to accomplish his purpose, 
He accomplishes it his way through you. He will be the one clearing the way for you. That's how I started this little note. Who's clearing your way? Who? If it's not God, you're on the wrong path. Last time I said this and I, I said, God, you sh-, and, I, and I said, Lord, are you sure this is your, I'm here? And he said, I want you to do it again because it's so important. So I said this last time as I'm closing this. We, we are living in very difficult times, but I have faith in my future and I have faith in your future and I have faith in this house's future. But as I said last time, beloved, it's going to take courage. You're going to have to hold on when you want to let go. When you're weak, he will become strong. Listen, it's going to take courage when life becomes overwhelming, when you struggle in ways that you never have before. When you're weak, he is strong. It's going to take courage to cling to hope when life seems to be falling apart. When you're weak, he is strong. Now, obviously, I'm adding that line in I did not do the last time. It's going to take courage to hold on when everything is out of control. And when you're weak, he's strong. It's going to take courage to hold on when you feel alone when the heavens seem brass and you're saying, why are, where are you, Lord, and why is this happening? It's going to take courage. When you're weak, he is strong. It's going to take courage when God seems to be silent. That's when you must hold on. Hold on when you are weak. He is strong. It's going to take courage to hold on when you're feeling afraid. You see, beloved, fear will come on all of us. The thing is, you just got to let it go. Take authority over it. And it's going to take courage to come through many things that you may have to come through in your life. And as I'm coming to the end of this, it's going to take courage to hold on and forgive yourself when you have made mistakes. None of us get through this life without making mistakes. We've all got feet of clay, naturally speaking and spiritually. I don't care who the greatest leaders are, the greatest leaders also have the greatest weaknesses. And I know I can tell you many of my weaknesses I'm not proud of, but that's the way it is. I'm working on them just like you're working on yours. Amen? Amen. So listen carefully. The one who knows the worst there is to know about you is the one who loves you the most. Oh, give him glory. Glory to God. So perhaps this year hasn't started out well for many. I know it's not, perhaps we know it's the truth. Hasn't worked out too well for many, but we still have a few months still in the year. God knows when you are weak in this year, he's going to come through strong. Amen. I'm done. Hallelujah. Let's bow our heads if we can. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes for a moment if we can. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. I am so appreciative. Once again, Lord, you proved to be my strength. I thank you for the privilege of ministering in this house, for these precious, precious people you have given to my care. And I do not take that lightly, Lord. It is an awesome responsibility. I pray today for each and every person within the sound of my voice 
that they would prosper and be in health, even as their soul prospers, that they would come to know you more and more, more and more deeply, deeply, Lord, into the deep things of your word and that they would hear your voice say, this is the way, my child, walk in it. I pray for each and every person, every family represented, every person listening to me by social media. I pray, Lord, that these prayers will go right into their spirits. And as I prayed at the beginning of this message, Lord, that they would leave here changed. Not just hear a sermon, but apply the principles of that sermon to their lives. And Father, I give you praise. If there would be one here today that needs to know you as their Savior, maybe they need to come back to you today. Maybe they've grown cold or the cares of the world have choked the word. I ask, Lord, that you would touch their hearts to come back to the ark of safety in you. If there be one here today and that's you, you can raise your hand and there's someone back there can see it's hard to see with the lights on back here but I'm just going to have everyone just say a prayer so that no one is left out would you do that with me say this with me Heavenly Father I thank you for Jesus today I receive Jesus as my Saviour and I make him my Lord and today I ask you Strengthen me with power in the inner man that I may fulfill my destiny and run the race with joy. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. And all of God's people said amen. Let's stand to earth.